Let's go ahead and do it. Greetings, unsettled souls. I'm very unsettled. I have tried to go live three times and YouTube keeps cutting me off. In the event that it crashes again, I'm just going to have to go with the uh, other streams on this, but I am doing my best. Hey, listen, I want to talk about this. For those of you who mentioned donating, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, this is what I do. I'm a writer. I'm a political commentator. Um, I do a number of other things which cannot be done during an outbreak. So, I mean, yeah, I really would like any help that anybody would like to give if you happen to enjoy what you're watching. I believe in earning my money. I believe in earning my keep. I do want to say that if you donate to the show, which you can do through PayPal to the correct views at hotmail.com, normally I put all money that I get directly back into the show. That's not going to be the case with this because I am starting to feel the crunch here. So it will be used to pay bills and other things. Although I do have to still mail out the dunce cap. I have last month last month that need to go out and uh, post office is closed. For those of you who donated to the printer, uh, there wasn't enough to get the printer. The printer I bought was uh, purchased. The guy never sent it. I got the money back. We're dealing with that. But anyway, if you want to donate to the show, you can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. And all the money that you give to me is going to be what, you know, carries me through until this is over with. You know, I'm, I've applied uh, for unemployment, but I was hired by the Census Bureau. Told you I worked in politics nonstop. Um, <clears throat> I'm working for the Census Bureau, but they're on hold. Um, unemployment doesn't know what they're doing. Congress can't seem to get the check out, so it is up to you, the humble, humble viewer, to carry me through this rather unpleasant spot. And uh, what are you donating for? What is it that I do? Well, I bring you the Dunce Cap of the Month Award for one, which I'm going to do now. Anyway. For those of you that don't know, I don't own a lot of different things. There is an extreme shortage of widgets in the house. I have a computer. I'm not a big gamer. Uh, my TV died, so I don't even have a flat screen. I do everything through the computer. All things through the computer. So, like I said, shortage of widgets. Money that I use tends to go towards experiences, although in this instance, it's going to be going towards uh, bills. So if you do want to donate, uh, one more time, I would greatly appreciate it. And you can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com, you can donate through PayPal. Once again, through PayPal, the correct views at hotmail.com. All right, friends, getting into the show. Plurist.com. Uh, the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, for those of you that don't know and are just tuning in, is the single largest collection of idiots ever collated into just one place, and we do it every month. And the stories get dumber and dumber all the way until we get to the end. When we get to find out who was the dumbest story, who was the biggest idiot of the month. Um, we have a lot of them. I do want to say that I have been giving out uh, dunce caps to many of the confused gendered people. And I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to shy away from that for a minute just because it's always the same award and I don't want it predictable. However, we do have stories that pertain to it, such as this one. Again, the plurist. Genderless activist devastated after the court rules that she must pick a gender on her passport. Now, she looks like a cross between oh, I don't know, a cue ball and um, Yul Brynner. I mean, it is a particularly unattractive person that we're talking about here, but that's not what matters. Many people would think I'm a rather unattractive person, and they may be right. Um, what matters is how dumb they are. That's how you get yourself onto the Dunce Cap of the Month Award Show. A British court on Tuesday ruled out adding a third option on passports for people who are confused, excuse me, for people who define themselves as neither male nor female following a lengthy legal battle, saying the existing policy was lawful. Yeah, because you looked down between your legs when you were born, not what you did later, and if you had a schmeckle, you were male, and if you don't have a schmeckle, you're female. 
If you added a schmeckle to yourself, you are still biologically female. If you cut your schmeckle off, you are still biological male. Glad I could clear that up for you. Mental hang-ups notwithstanding. The Court of Appeal ruled in favor of the Home Office, thank God, or Interior Ministry, in a case brought by Christy Ellen Kane, who identifies as non-gendered, and said current passport rules do not constitute a human rights breach. Well, let me tell you what. You can call yourself non-gendered. You don't have a right in the world to do that. I support your right to do that. What you do not have a right to do is insist that everybody else join in your mental delusions. You are female. Your passport says female. Deal with it. Many of us have a lot bigger problems. <clears throat> Elaine Kane, Ellen Kane, who's just looking for press, who first started campaigning for genderless people in 1992 after shedding a female identity can't be done, argued that passports should be an X option for those who do not identify as either male or female. What we're doing is we're conflating what a person believes with what is true. They can believe whatever they want. They can live however they want. They should not be bashed. They should not be shown prejudice. They should not be held back. But at the point where they make other people say anything, that is a breach of liberty, plain and simple. Backed by the law firm Clifford Chance, uh, took a chance, which uh, took off and uh, took on the case, excuse me, pro bono in 2013, Elaine Kane was challenging a 2018 high court ruling dismissing the potential review of the case. So now she's boo-hooing that she has to be identified as a female, even though she is, of course, a female. I told you it's the Dunce Cap of the Month award show. Guys, Breitbart.com. Employers told to crack down on sports banter as it excludes women is gateway to laddish behavior. Well, do we, are we going to tell women to quit talking about soap operas or, you know, uh, what, what, the color gray? Uh, well, what is it? The, 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 the pseudo S&M thing. By the way, if you're into that, forget about the, that. Go to the story of O. Go straight to, go straight to the heart of it. Read the story of O. But anyway, uh, are they going to start talking? Are they, should women stop talking about women's studies? Because it excludes men. Furthermore, does this imply that women don't know anything about sports? Because I can name a number of women who know a lot more about sports than I do. So that is why they are on the Dutch Cap of the Month Award. Who is they? Companies need to moderate office chat to stop men talking about sports because such conversations exclude women and are a gateway to lavish behavior, the head of a professional institution told the BBC. Chief Executive of the Chartered Management Institute, Anne Frank, F-R-A-N-K-E, not the uh, famous one, told BBC Radio 4's Today program on Monday, that Bosch's sort of curtail conversations about sports in the office, a staple of British workspace conversation. Now, if I were you, I would fill the workplace with even more talk about sports. I would go out of my way to find out things about sports that I didn't even like just so that I could talk about it. And then again, what I already know about Christian Hosoy could fill libraries. That's my favorite athlete for anybody that wants to know. Followed by Tom Brady. I have nothing against sports enthusiasts or cricket fans. That's great. But the issue is many people are cricket fans. Then get out of the conversation, you dumb trollop. That goes for the dumb dude as well. Miss uh, Frank said, adding that it was the responsibility of the team leaders to stop that kind of banter in order to be inclusive. Maybe we don't want to include you. Maybe if people are talking about sports, they don't want to include people in that particular conversation, which isn't about sports. Shazam, Sparky! Maybe when I'm talking about industrial music, I'm not trying to include people in the conversation that don't know anything about industrial music! She continued, Oh God, a lot of women in particular feel left out. They don't follow these sports, and they don't like either being forced to talk about them or not being included in the conversation. Good, then the women should talk to themselves about things that they wish to talk about. It's called freedom. 
Claiming that talking sports was a gateway to more offensive behavior, the CMI chief said it's a gateway to more laddish behavior, and if it goes unchecked, it's a signature. It's a signature of laddish culture. Laddish culture is what has made England great. So you probably shouldn't be so quick to attack it. It is laddish culture that uh, made sure that women were treated better than they ever have been in the history of the world. Yes, there's still abuse going on. Yes, there will always be abuse going on. But women do other things towards men. It's not the norm. It's not common. And it's not brought on by talking about sports. They have a responsibility, these employers, to make sure that everybody feels comfortable. No, they don't. No, they don't. Plain and simple. They should have no say over what people are talking about. It's called freedom. Get over it. Plain and simple. I'm tired of other people thinking their freedoms mean that they can get rid of other people's. That is not the case. Once again, if you do like what you're hearing, don't forget that yours truly is asking for donations during this hard time of outbreak, quarantine, and no work. And you can do that at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. Guys, The Guardian, why liberal white women pay a lot of money to learn over dinner how they're racist. Now, these, these women that started this are absolutely brilliant. First of all, there is no inherent racism. There is no white guilt. If you feel white guilt, then you're a white idiot. Most white people I know do not, do not, have not, are not racist. Are there a couple? Yes. Are there some black people that are also racist against white people? Yes. Don't say that black people can't be racist because they don't have any power. Lots of black people are CEOs. Lots of black people are business leaders, yada, yada, yada. And all of those people, of course, could very well be prejudiced. Thankfully, most of them are not. This whole white thing is a myth. It's like global warming. It's a lie. White people do not look at black people and judge them based on their skin in almost every instance. I only know a couple of people who feel that way towards black people, and likewise, I only know a couple of black people that feel that way towards whites. So that's why I got the Dunce Cap of the Month award show, or it mentioned in the Dunce Cap of the Month award show. These old biddies managed to find a way to make money by having white people show up and hear about how they're racist. And they even say something racist, they say, because white people were told never to get up from the dinner table. In other words, they're stuck at the table hearing their drivel just to be polite. Their fake drivel. Freshly made pasta is drying on the wooden banisters lighting the hall of a beautiful home in Denver, Colorado. Fox hunting photos decorate the walls and the rooms are full of books, probably which have not been read. A fire is burning and downstairs a group of liberals, no surprise, white women have gathered around a long wooden table to admit how racist they are. Recently, I've been driving around seeing a black person and have the assumption that they are up to no good. So, because you are racist, you're going to support the notion that all people are racist. Okay, I don't see somebody black on the road and assume that they're doing something illegal. I remember when I drove taxi all the time, people would say, Yeah, well, black people hear the doors lock quicker. No, they don't. You may hear the doors lock if you're a black person standing on the corner and I'm at the light at the corner. You know what? If you were a 12-year-old white girl, I would do the same thing. It's because I don't want to be robbed by a black person or a 12-year-old white girl. Call it a hunch. It's a race to dinner. A white women volunteer. They pay $2,500, by the way, which can be divided among guests. How very kind. How white of them. A frank discussion, as that word again, is led by co-founders Regina Jackson, who is black, and Saro Rao, who identifies as Indian American. I don't know anybody racist against either, either race. Virtually no one. They started Race to Dinner as a ch challenge white women to accept their racism, selling people that they're racist, even if they're not. And now they're selling it to them for $2,500. You can sell a lie for $2,500. If you can make over two grand off a lie, then I certainly should be able to make some money by doing this show. Are we fair here? At least my show is real and this isn't. Rowell and Jackson believe white liberal women are the most receptive audience because they are open to changing their behavior. Because they're so racist when they're not. 
They don't bother with the 55% of white women who voted for Trump. White men, they say, are similarly a lost cause. White men are never going to change anything. If they were, they would have done it by now. They don't need to change because current white men aren't doing anything wrong. White women, on the other hand, are uniquely placed to challenge racism because of their proximity to power and wealth, Jackson says. If they don't hold these positions themselves, the white men in power are often their family, friends, and partners. No, they're not. Because the problem is not nearly as extant as you biddies would like to imply that it is. Moving on, Paul Joseph Watson, climate activist, leaves environmental movement because it's too white. Oh, that's not racist. What if a white person left a group of people because the group was too black? Oh, well, that's racist. But this racism here, it's perfectly acceptable. A Filipino, a Filipino climate activist wrote an article for Vice saying that she left the environmental movement because it is too white. Those awful white people and they're trying to save the planet. The climate movement is overwhelmingly white, so I walked away says Karen Luce Hermes, accusing her fellow tree huggers of exploiting her for woke token diversity points. No, the white people included you in their movement, which is fake, by the way. There is no man-made global warming, and this can be proven very easily by studying the sunspots and what they have done through all of history. They included your Filipino ass in their group because they wanted your opinion, they wanted your view, they cherished your thought, and they were not racist, as I've been saying just about nobody is. I've never heard, I can honestly say I've never heard even one person racist against Filipino people. Not one, ever. I have never heard that, okay? Never. You want to know why I've never heard that? I've never heard that because it's never happened. After a while, I realized I only would be called upon when climate organizations need an inspiring story or a diverse voice contracts for campaign or to participate in a workshop for fun when everyone else on the all-white project was getting paid. Maybe they worked themselves up to that point. I mean, even in a folly-ridden group like that, you have to work your way up. Imagine that. Hermes' main bone of contentions appear to be that her white candidates don't adequately embrace their non-intersectionality, which basically means using climate alarmism as a vehicle to push all other demented far-left political demands. Anti-racism and anti-capitalism need to be part of organizing, says Hermes. So basically, they want to use the alarming... They want to use the racist alarmism, which isn't happening, to push the man-made global alarmism, which isn't happening, to destroy capitalism. That's what that means. If green policies fail to consider anti-racism and migrant rights, how is any person of color supposed to feel voting for them and organizing their safe spaces? Oh, God. Since the whole movement is a lie and a scam to begin with, the fact that you're even in it shows that you are among the slower working mental capacity people of our society to start with. Uh, this is also Paul Joseph Watson. CNN is angry that white people are trying to stop the coronavirus from spreading. According to CNN, now this, this one almost won, but I've given a dunce cap to CNN before. According to CNN, the real concern about the coronavirus is not the potential for a global pandemic. It's the fact that there are too many white people trying to stop it. Oh, but it's okay to be right racist against white people, right? And again, I'm sure you can tell by looking at me. My dad was Italian, Sicilian, and Mexican. They think that much of that Mexican heritage was from South American Indians. I've never been DNA tested, so I don't want to be like Pocahontas, Miss Elizabeth Warren, but yeah, it's a very good chance. You know what? I've seen maybe very few people in my life that have ever said anything about Indians. Usually it's a joke. Very few times in my life has anybody ever cared that I was Mexican. I've had more people, Italians or Mexicans, maybe not like me. The Italian and the Mexicans don't because I'm not Catholic. I'm Christian, but not Catholic. I also ran into that on the white side of my family since my mother is Irish, and I'm still not Catholic. Neither was she. Neither was my dad. 
According to CNN, the real concern about the corona... Oh, I already read that. Take two. This was, That was a message sent by an article posted on the news network's website entitled Corona, Coronavirus Task Force. Another example of Trump's administration's lack of diversity. Who cares if diversity helps us or not? What matters is that you have the most intelligent people on the board at one time. Dr. Fauci is Italian. Dr. Birx is female. For that matter, Do uh, Trump has been talking about um, many of these issues with uh, Ben Carson, who the last time I checked, he's a black man. Yeah, he's black. It's true. He's a black man. The two things illustrated in the article showed Barack Obama's circle of advisors during the 2017 Ebola outbreak and President Trump's advisors during the recent meeting of the coronavirus outbreak. In the photograph showing Trump's advisors, most of them are, God forbid, white men. Who are these experts, whined CNN's Tom, uh, Brandon Tensley, excuse me? They're largely the same sorts of white men and a couple of women on the sidelines who dominated the Trump administration from the very beginning. So the people that have done a good job so far, given us the best economy in history, are being tagged to deal with this outbreak. That's not bad. Oh, but what if he needs people who aren't economically sound? What if he needs people, medical experts? That would be Dr. Fauci. That would be Dr. Burks. How many of you realize this? Um, Do Donald Trump is not exactly known for bringing Democrats on board by choice. However, Dr. Burks is, an, is a doctor from the Obama era. Donald Trump contacted her in the European Union and requested that she be brought to the United States. Why? Because she had the medical knowledge to help. Even though she is not a um, uh, necessarily a cheerleader for the Republican Party. You can tell they get a long range. She's got an absolutely gorgeous smile for an older woman. Uh, and she laughs all the time when, uh, when uh, her and Trump are talking you can, off camera and stuff. You can tell they've developed quite a friendship. He concludes by saying that uh, Trump's values and opinions of mostly white men are those images who mirror, no, excuse me, Trump values the opinion of mostly white men who are mirror images of the president himself and said, uh, he said in a statement in the image, a statement that's predictable and is infuriating. Trump's administration lacks diversity. We don't need diversity to stop a virus. The virus is not going to stop magically because somebody on the team is Korean or because somebody on the team is black. It is going to stop because the best minds available are working on it. Plain and simple. He's also not going to bring in a lot of people who he doesn't have rapport with, which could be leaking, which was a problem early on in the White House, if you pay attention. Apparently, wanting to not appear racist is more important than stopping a rapidly spreading global pandemic, which has now reached at least 23 counties, as much as is an older, older article. This is another example of how diversity just means less white people. At its heart, it is flagrantly racist a premise that people should not be judged on the content of their character, but on the color of their skin, and that the people with white skin should be discriminated against. Amen. Very well said, Paul Joseph Watson. Uh, guys, we only have a couple stories to get to, and once again, if you'd like to donate, you can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com, and that you can do through PayPal. Um, three stories left. World Health Organization gives a new name to prevent stigmatization. Now, I, this is an older article. I'm going to glance right over it. But how did COVID-19 get the name? Well, the World Health Organization, according to Prison Planet, also Paul Joseph Watson, has given coronavirus a new name in order to prevent people feeling stigmatized. I'm touching my face. I'm allowed to. I live alone. Yes, because the first thing a global health authority tasked with preventing a mass deadly virus outbreak should be concerned about is political correctness. The coronavirus has been officially named COVID-19 because the World Health Org because to the World Health Organization, we had to find a name that did not refer to a geographical location, an animal, an individual, or other group. 
Having a name matters to prevent the use of other names that can be inaccurate or stigmatizing. No, the virus came from China. Therefore, it is the Chinese virus. Many people accurately call the Spanish flu outbreak the American flu. Why? Because they hate Americans. No. Because it started in America! The name change is in line with the WHO's official statement that they first declared the coronavirus a global emergency, yada, yada, yada. Respondents of the name change on Twitter were not impressed. Damn, I was going to name Chairman Nasty Virus 2020. Wait, so avoiding a stigma is more important than saving lives, someone wrote? At this age, people are... That was the second one. At this page, people... At this... At this age, people are just going to refer to it as coronavirus or the virus from China. But keep on eating those freaking bats, remarked another user. And, of course, he censored it so it wouldn't be uh, removed. All right, friends, a prison plan has given us our runner-up to the game. Well, actually, this is from Weasel Zippers. Uh, prison Planet's just sharing it. The runner-up for the Dunce Cap of the Month award show. Does anybody out there, both of you, uh, both of you, um, Bloomberg fans, have any of you wondered just why it could be that Bloomberg isn't in the running anymore? I can tell you why. It's here. Bloomberg and his audience celebrate. Oh, there's like 10 people here. I don't know, maybe 20. Bloomberg and his audience of almost no one celebrate U.S. coal plants closing with a round of applause. Now, this they would be doing because they subscribe to the lie and the myth and the provable falsehood of man-made global warming. And as I always say, man-made global warming is a lie. Now it's cost somebody an election. We have just closed the 304th coal-powered plant in the country. And yes, it deserves a round of applause. A lot of work. Now, see, I personally am very happy that he said this. And the main reason I didn't give him the dunce cap of the month is because I am very happy that he did this. Uh, what it does is it very easily shows why he's not elected and makes it so that none of us ever have to worry about saying the words, President Bloomberg. All right, friends, and you hear it in the distance. I know you do. If you don't, you should be because it's about to be playing. I hear it in my head even before it plays. You know what it is. The Dunce Cow for the Month Award winner. Let me remind you, if you would like to donate, you can do so. A frizzy fraggle. If you would like to donate to the show, friends, you can do so at the correct views. Ah, at hotmail.com through PayPal. The correct views at hotmail.com. The winner! Sanders raises over $2 million for coronavirus relief effort. Now, before I get into this, let me be abundantly clear that I am not mocking the man for his help. Let me say again that I am praising what Bernie Sanders did here. He's running for election after all, so certainly I'm praising what Bernie Sanders did. However, I am mocking him because it proves Donald Trump correct. All of us on the conservative side and the libertarian side of which I am on have long said that government can certainly help. There shouldn't be an IRS, for instance. So since we do have one, I don't mind them sending me a check since they had no right to take it to begin with, according to the Constitution. I paid it. It's my money. I should get it back. However, government takes a long time. Food is getting short in many places, including here. So... And then that's a, I used to have an emergency fund, used to, like four grand. Over the last three years of my life, I have none. So I am one of the people that prepared. But the idea that government can be the answer, if that was the case, then Bernie Sanders would not have had to do what he did because government would have been on it, right? Oh, but they're... Look at this. Senator Bernie Sanders, independent Vermont, his campaign said Saturday morning that it had raised more than $2 million in the last 48 hours for several charities that are working to combat the coronavirus outbreak in the U.S. Now, notice that two things. First of all, government is working so badly that he did not 
have faith in them to get this done, even though he's trying to get the government in charge of everything. Second of all, he gave the money to charities, not to the government. Why? Because the government's not going to hand it off well. The independent charities will. Isn't that just what Trump and people like me have been saying forever? Thanks, Byrne. <laughs> Appreciate it. The money raised will go to No Kid Hungry, One Fair Wage, Emergency Fund, Meals on Wheels, Restaurant Workers Community Foundation, COVID-19 Emergency Relief Fund, and the National Domestic Workers Alliance, <clears throat> the campaign announced. What we've seen in the last two days is the definition of fighting for someone you don't know, said Ruben Karan, the Sanders campaign digital fundraising director. Yeah, he also proves Trump point that the government is not to be trusted. If it was to be trusted, this need wouldn't be there. The people supporting his campaign have made more than 50,000 donations to help those most impacted by coronavirus because they understand that now more than ever, it is important that we are in this together, Corbin added. There have been more than 100, excuse me, more than 19,600 confirmed cases. That has gone up. This was dated uh, the 21st. So friends, that is the dunce cap of the month award winner. I'm going to show you the hat, as I always do, and then I'm going to spin the uh, camera around so that you can see the award. Those of you on YouTube, go to facebook.com slash the correct views. Look on today's date, the 28th of March 2020, and you will see the award. All right, uh, here's the hat. Uh, again, I don't have a printer. It was do People donated for it. And then the guy that sold it to me made a mistake and then canceled the order. And I don't have enough money in the show fund yet to do that. Uh, thanks for proving Trump right, says this image. Um, of course, big government. There's always at least one of my no smoking signs here. This is a good drawing of Sanders I made. That isn't what I meant. That's a great drawing of Sanders. And then here we have Uncle Sam can help. Now, he's going to get mailed this dunce cap. This is a paper dunce cap. I'm really not that thrilled about paper dunce caps, but they didn't have the cones where I work that I normally get. And I didn't want to go show, I didn't want to go to a bunch of stores that I haven't already subjected myself to during an outbreak. So I made it out of paper. No, that is not going to be the norm. Here is what the dunce cap of the month award says. I'm hurrying here because I don't know how much time I have on this camera. It's a phone because I can't afford a camera yet, but you can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. The dunce cap of the month award show. I should actually, it says the dunce cap of the month award. Let me word that better. And now I need to get to it because I lost the damn image. Oh, how did I just do that? The Dunce Cap of the Month Award. This Dunce Cap of the Month Award goes without reservation to Senator Bernie Sanders. Bernie, the big touter for the supposed benefits of governmental solutions, quote-unquote. While copious amounts of praise should be given to the work that was done raising money for the COVID-19 outbreak, the fact that it was needed shows that the government is woefully slow and not the solution to problems which face the nation. Otherwise, the help would not have been needed. For failing to see how this proves that point, you win the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. I'm going to show you the award. I'm going to jump off here. And as, as I do it, friends, remember, you can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. I need money to mail these out. I need money for many things. Usually, like I said, I put it towards the show, but I'm going to have to put it towards me because of said outbreak. Good night, friends. God bless. And I, I sincerely hope that all of you are doing well. I hope you're listening to the quarantine, uh, doing doing what's uh, expected of us all. And if you would like to know more about it, make sure you look up uh, witsnews.com. I do daily updates on that site pertaining to this virus. Good night, friends. God bless you. I, I mean that. Oh, and if you have someone that loves you, snuggle up real close because... There's also a shortage of widgets around here in people, a certain person.